five. There's some key matchups in this game you have to keep an eye on. Obviously, Donovan McNabb and Warren Sapp. It's his job, Sapp, to keep him in the pocket. He can hurt you outside. Trey Thomas and Simeon Rice. Simeon Rice has played against him a lot. He was in Arizona. They're not unfamiliar with one another. He's got to bring pressure inside on Brad Johnson and Chad Lewis and John Lynch. We saw Lewis fall. It's Lynch that he's got to account for in the running game. He is the guy that comes in, and he's their plugger. There's Lynch, the all-pro. Terrell Buckholder and Jamie Reeder in the backfield for the Eagles. And Buckholder will get his first carry stuck at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> The Eagles really can't afford not to get yards on first and ten. We talk about how much the Eagles like to blitz on defense. Tampa Bay will throw all kinds of different looks at you. And as long as they can use up that front four, they can use the pressure of that front four, they don't need to blitz, which makes it very difficult to throw the ball down the field for Andy Reid's offense. Reid, third season, second playoff. Whistle this play dead. Prior to the snap, full start offense, number 22. Five yard penalty, still second down. That's yeah, Deuce, Deuce Taylor, who they put out as a wide receiver. That's the distinct difference between these two football teams. They're both excellent defensive teams, but on the Tampa Bay side, as Joe said, all they want to do is get it done with the front four. Let these guys do all the work so they never have to blitz and the linebackers can play in coverage and then to make the tackles. On the other side, the Philadelphia Eagles, as we said before, they put 30 blitzes in for this game. Buckhalter and Staley are getting together. Staley goes out as a wide receiver. Buckhalter will get it on the delay. Corral Buckhalter to the 39-yard line. Shelton Quarles and Dexter Jackson on the tackle. Buckhalter Buck up two Staley this year. And the big thing there, Michael, is that you look at the average. 4.5 yards a carry, 586 yards. Deuce Staley still wearing a harness for a shoulder problem that he has. He only gained 604 yards and only averaged 3.6 yards a carry. If they want to use a power back, Buckhalter's the guy in this game. Third and five. McNabb will scramble. This is what they didn't want. Look at the speed. Donovan McNabb and a flag at the end of the play for a late hit. That'll be 15 more. Boy, I'll tell you what, you know. Warren Sampson cannot let this guy out. Now, I'm not talking about going wide out of the pocket. I'm talking about stepping up. And on that time there, Donovan McNabb did not even hesitate, Joseph. Well, that's the whole thing. He's so much more effective when he makes quick decisions, and we've seen that later in the year. And then when he gets outside running, he's as good as any running back. He is. He's powerful. When you have linebackers locked up on backs one-on-one, -on -one, there's nobody in the area to stop him. And it looks like the officials are having a discussion about the late hit call. Personal foul on the defense, number 34. For a late hit of the quarterback, out of bounds, will go half the distance to the goal, first down. Dexter Jackson is trying to pursue Donovan McNabb. There he is now. That's called a late hit. It looks, a bad call. It looks like he's throwing himself on the playing field, and Donovan was angled that way. But the, the thing about it is, what, what's wrong is that Donovan McNabb is a runner, and they know that he can run with the football. And this guy's not even out of bounds yet, and he's being hit. That's a terrible call. Absolutely, Paul. 39-yard run, the penalty on top of it. First down, Eagle. Stay up. Fans cheering Deuce and barely got back to the line of scrimmage. They almost missed the exchange here. And the one thing about Deuce Staley as a running back, because of the harness he wears, you can see it hanging down off of his right shoulder a little bit. They almost muffed his hand off. He doesn't really have control. It's bobbled. And now he's got to try and get it to his left arm. That's where he feels most confident. Second and ten. Staley on the season over 600 yards. Only 3.6 of carry. And there's moving up front to left tackle Trey Thomas. 
personally from a quarterback's perspective? False start offense, number 76, five-yard penalty, still second down. When you get a team that has momentum going, I'm not big on calling long counts or hard counts. Keep the momentum going for your offense. Don't get up there and try and get cute. You don't have to audible a lot. You have to look around. Keep the momentum moving for your team. The thing about it is, if you look at Donovan McNabb right now in the huddle, he's trying to get plays in. He wants them faster. They're not getting them to him fast enough. McNabb in the red zone this year, 19 touchdown passes, only two interceptions. Scrambles again. A great move to get away, and then McNabb forced out of bounds inside the game. He's a horse. He is just a big horse. They can't get a hold of him. Jamie Duncan, 240-pound linebacker, gets his hands on him and can't touch him. Donovan McNabb, very careful down in the red area, decides he wants to run. Now, there's the move. Whoa. <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry, but that is that is embarrassing. And Derek Brooks can't bring him down. What a great move. Jamie couldn't keep up with him, and Derek still can't get him on the ground. That's one of the things you sacrifice, though, Michael. When you start blitzing, you've got some people staying covered in the secondary, or he can run. Leaves a lot of holes. Third and nine. McNabb under pressure. Throws. That'll only gain about a yard as they got it to Chad Lewis. But he was losing his footing as he went down, and now the Eagles have to go for the tie instead of the lead. I believe that Tampa Bay's defense has Donovan McNabb confused to a large degree. The only big play they've managed to get is the run by him. As far as dropping back and throwing the football, Donovan really hasn't found anybody open. David Akers will try from 26. The pro ball kicker. Just inside that left upright. First quarter, 3-3 three, three from the back. Next on ABC. Gang Green. Gang Green. Al, Dan, and Dennis got a good one to <laughs> Aaron Stecker, the deep man for the Buccaneers. From the three. Tripped up, reaches the 24. Let's go to the sideline, Susie Dalton. Well, Mike, earlier Joe talked about concern about this turf. Well, I talked to Keyshawn Johnson before the game, and he said he rather likes it. He's wearing a cleat with just a little bit extra rubber sole made for wet turf. He said it'll actually make him faster, which is a good thing, because apparently Eagles cornerback Al Harris said he doesn't have anything to worry about because Keyshawn can't run by him. Of course, Keyshawn's reply, uh, what about the three pro bowls? Clyde Christensen also told me they'll use him more in the slot so they can control the double team. Bottom line, other receivers have to step up. Susie, the first thousand yard receivers for the Bucks since Mark Perry. Done out in the flat. Ward Dunn, who did not play last week, bothered by a turf toe. Hurt a lot of the year. He is still a big weapon for this club. Ward Dunn for years has gotten knocked because of his size, 5'9", 180 pounds. Everybody says, well, you know, he'd be a good third down back. I don't agree with that at all. I think that he's the kind of guy who can touch the ball 25, 20, 25 times a game and be effective for an entire season. He proved it last year when Mike Allstock was hurt. He's an excellent inside runner in spite of his size. Now Allstock's turn. Across the 30 to the 31, they need to reach the 34. Well, they knew down. this was the guy that they had to stop today, Mike Allstock. Mike Allstock always runs with his shoulders squared in the line of scrimmage. Even if he's going to make a cut, he makes a cut sideways, and he keeps his shoulders squared. Look at Allstock. Look at his eyes. Watch his shoulders. They're always squared in the line of scrimmage. Even when he turns into the hole, going from left to right or right to left, they still stay square, and that's what makes him so effective. Brad Johnson, they've got him inside the 25. Hugh Douglas. Douglas, who had nine and a half sacks in the regular season and is on his way to another Pro Bowl, gets the sack. I said Hugh Douglas.
Bulldogs will be able to get him and smack him in the mouth because of one thing. They got a blitz coming. He's getting tackled at the line of scrimmage by Kenyatta Walker. I don't believe that Hugh Douglas is the type of pass rusher you can leave Kenyatta Walker a rookie alone on. They're going to have to put Dave Moore, the tight end, next to him to help him out. Mark Grohler is the punt. Beautiful high kick for Mitchell. The 31. Brian Mitchell back across the 40. Where Mark is down on the ball. A return of 10 after a punt of 45 with check the penalty. Holding on the kicking team during the kick. That penalty will be enforced 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down, Philadelphia. So the Eagles will have excellent field position. The Eagles defense knows it's up to them today. Team to go first quarter. Bucks and the Eagles tied at three. The penalty missed called by Larry Nemers. They will mark it off against the Eagles all the way back to the 21. Donovan McNabb's numbers on the year, 25 touchdowns, only 12 picks, and that rating seventh in the National Football League. Staley back in there with a leader as a blocker in front of him. Play action, blitz coming on McNabb. Tries to get it to trash, but he was blanketed by Donnie Abraham. They got to Donovan in the pocket that time, but they have not been able to contain him running the football. Here he is, Anthony McFarlane, holding on for dear life. He escapes and gets rid of the ball. Now, takes off on this long joint that gives the Eagles the opportunity for the field goal. Once in the red area, Jamie Duncan can't bring him down, and Derrick Brooks has to run him out of bounds. It's his legs. That'll be a difference in this game for the Eagles. I don't believe the Eagles will run the football effectively with the other backs. Joe, so one yard passing, 46 rushing for Donovan McNabb so far. This time, he's got his tight end, Chad Lewis. We asked Tony Dungy how he planned to defend a player of McNabb's caliber. In a lot of uh, situations, he kind of is like Michael Jordan where he's trying to get everybody involved but in the critical times uh, you know he takes over the game and that's what we've got to try to eliminate not let him be the big playmaker on those critical downs. And he was the playmaker on the last one hitting Lewis for the first down. Well the referee never called first down in Tampa Bay so wait a minute whoa whoa whoa, whoa. let's let's measure it bring the chains out let's take a look at this thing. Donovan says look he said it was first down just give it to us. If it's where that marker really is then it's not a first down because they had to get to the 31 yard line. All right Paul this is your specialty. Well I, you know my eyes Play aren't, your first my eyes aren't as young as they used to be. This is your first. Come on baby be right one time be right Paulie. You're wrong, you dummy. <laughs> not a dummy. You're entitled to one error through the course of a year. Um, but don't let it happen again. Well, Saps the cause of that. He called for the measurement. Yeah, but he got the one in August. That's right. That's true. <laughs> That's not too far away, is it? No. Oh, and he is buried. Simeon Rice, the first guy to wrap him up, and then got a lot of help. You know, that last play, that was all Warren Sapp. All Warren Sapp. Even though Simeon Rice makes a play, it was all Warren Sapp. Simeon Rice is going to benefit from the penetration of Sapp to make the ball carrier cut back into him. Here comes Sapp. Look at this. He forces him back inside. Number 99 is Sapp. He didn't make the play, but he set it up. Second and 11 for the Eagles. Staley on the toss. That's the old student body right toss three. The way I think the Eagles if, will be able to run the football with their backs, if they're able to do, will probably be with a two tight end formation. You want to anchor down both sides, and it neutralizes John Lynch a little bit, so he can't figure out which way you're going to run. He's the guy that's going to come up and force the stop in the runs. Eagles 